We are studying the word and we've been talking about getting prepared for 2021. And this year we'll have its challenges as well. But the most important thing is the preparation at the beginning of a year, at the beginning of a season. Preparation will help you deal with all the frustration, all the challenges that you're facing. Because you're, you're going to say, I know I'm ready for this. Last week we studied about Jesus getting prepared for his three-year ministry. Now, Jesus was 30 years old when he started his ministry on earth. That means for 30 years, Jesus is preparing for three years. Now, at this preparation time, Jesus gets baptized at 30 years old. At 30 years old, he gets baptized. In the next chapter, we see the Spirit of God that descended on Jesus like a dove, when Jesus got baptized, the father, and the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He speaks over him and it's like a dove came down representing the power of the Holy Spirit came down on him. And then the spirit of God began to lead him, lead him. And it took him into a wilderness or it took him into a desert. And Jesus was there for 40 days, but he was not just there. He was fasting for 40 days. Water, food, wasn't eating. He was hungry. And the devil came to him in his weakest point and began to tempt him with food, tempt him with shortcuts. One of the things that the devil said to Jesus, if you'll just bow down to me, he showed all the kingdoms of the earth. What he said, he, he showed Jesus all the nations now, when Jesus is looking at nations, he's not looking at USA, Canada, Russia. He's looking at people, people, people. Because that's what he's after. He loves you. The heartbeat of God is beating souls, souls, souls. All God wants is a relationship with you. Now, Jesus came with a mission to reach the world. And what does the devil show him? He shows him all the kingdoms of the world. He said this, they're under my authority. They're under my leadership. And if you would just bow down to me, I will give it all to you. The truth was that if Jesus did bow down to him, Satan would have not given him anything because Satan is a liar. And when I say he's a liar, so you might say, oh, who's Satan? You might be your first time here. I understand that. But this is how Satan works. He comes with bad ideas that are wrapped up really pretty. And then you go for it. It's called temptation. And he promises you, you know, you know, if you indulge in this temptation, you'll have it all. You're the only drug dealer that will get away with it. I know all of them went to prison. They're all dying. Not you, though. You're special. You're the one that could, you're the one that could partake of cocaine and you could kick, you, you're the one that could have control over it. It'll never, you're not going to be like that. You're not going to be strung out. You're not, that's not you. That's not you. That's them. You could do it this way and you'll have it all. You could take a shortcut and you'll still get there. Lie, lie, lie. It doesn't work that way. There is such thing as truth and there is such thing as a lie. And right now what they want to do, what they want to do, what Satan wants to do in this system is blur all the lines. Live in the gray. Live there. And right now we're living in a society that promotes gray living. Just, you know, just be cool. The goal is just... Cohabitate, coexist. And as a result, what we're doing is giving in 
to lies. So Jesus saying this town, if you'll just bow down, I'll give it all to you. But if Jesus bowed down, Satan was really giving us his card. His card was, I want you to bow down to me so I could be Lord over you. Satan does not bring temptation without having a goal to take lordship and authority over your life, your emotions, your body, your decisions, and your future. So Jesus was tempted three times that the Bible gives, but he was tempted for 40 days. He doesn't give in to one of those temptations. He is now ready for three years of ministry. The Bible says that when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he came out with such authority and power. They've never seen a man walk in that power of authority. And the reason they've never seen a man walk in that kind of power and authority, because every other man from Adam all the way to this generation, every one of them surrendered their authority to Satan. But Jesus did it. He spends that time in the wilderness, facing every temptation, facing every obstacle that we face, and he conquered every one of them. He didn't conquer them so he could be a conqueror. He conquered them so he could help you conquer it. He was fighting every battle. He was fighting your depression. He was fighting your mistakes. He was fighting every bad decision you've made. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to face it all. I'll face every devil. I'll face every addiction. I'll face every temptation. But the only difference, I won't give into it. And then I'll give you my power to overcome it. He faced it. He was prepared for his ministry. Now we're going into 2021. Are you ready for 2021? And today what I want to talk to you is vision. And the title of this sermon is simple. Get vision for 2021. Because when you have vision, you are dangerous. You know what vision talks about? It talks about a picture. What vision is? Is a picture of your future. What is vision? A preview of of what is to come. What is vision? A prophecy. A vivid image that appears in our minds, although it is not actually present. It's a dream. It's a word from God. Why are you dangerous when you got a vision? Because it doesn't matter how things are today. I already know how it's gonna turn out. I might be going through a process right now but I know this, it doesn't end here. I'm a point B, but I'm sure excited a point about a point A, but I'm sure excited about point B. I'm here, but I'm headed there. That's why in the middle of my battle, in the middle of my struggle, in the middle of my challenges, I could praise God. I can worship God. I can still smile. I can still treat you right because I know it doesn't end in my place that I'm at now. I am moving forward. I have vision. 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 In Habakkuk 2 3, it says this This vision is for a future time. What is vision about? The future. What is vision about? the future. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. In these next 20, as we're fasting and we're praying and we're starting off our year, the greatest thing that could happen in these next 21 days as we're fasting is this. You get a word from God. You get a glimpse of 2021. You get a picture of your future. Because once you have that, you'll fight for that. You won't give up. You won't quit. Because the dream is so worthwhile. And if I give up, that will not be fulfilled. And the question I ask, what are you aiming at? What are you going after in 2021? Because if you don't know that, you're going to be a victim by, of your circumstances. 
when circumstances aren't good, you'll run. Fear will start making your decisions instead of confident faith and conviction that I have a purpose, God has a vision for my life, and I'm headed there, and there's no one that's going to talk me out of it. Someone say, no one's going to talk me out of it. When you become, when you get a vision from God, you become tenacious. I almost become militant. When I get a vision from God and someone tries to talk me out of it, I tell them this, look, bro, with you or without you, this is going to come to pass. One thing I'm convinced, God spoke to me and this is going to happen. I'll fight every devil. I'll fight every enemy. I'll fight my flesh. But the truth is, this vision is going to come to pass because people are dependent on me holding on to the vision. It's bigger than you. When God gives you a vision, there's a lot of people attached to it. If the vision doesn't happen, if you don't, I want you to get, if you don't get it, you'll never achieve it. So the first step of conquering God's vision in your life is this, stopping you from getting the vision. But let's keep on reading Habakkuk. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. You know what it's saying here? If it seems slow, don't just wait, but wait with the right attitude. Don't wait angrily. Don't wait impatiently. Don't wait critically. Don't wait complainingly. But just wait patiently. And the reason you're waiting patiently because for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. What he's saying is, any vision I give you, I want you to just receive it, write it down, believe it, take action on it, and I'm the one that's going to make sure it is fulfilled. I'm going to give you the power of vision right now. The power of writing down vision, getting some goals set for your life. There's a, a couple that just started recently coming to our church. Her name is Rosa. Her, his name is Philip. They are now a married couple. They started coming to our church when they were in a really desperate place. Rosa was addicted to drugs and Philip was her drug dealer. So she is hooked up with her drug dealer. Someone invites Rosa and Philip to the house of God to show them that there's another vision, that there's another alternative, that there could be another ending, that there could be a new beginning. But without a new vision, without a new word, they stay with all they know. You know what's so great about being exposed to God and exposed to vision and exposed to Bible stories and exposed to the challenge that God is giving you today? You're seeing something and you know what's so great? You can't unsee it. Like I seen it. There's more to my life. Do you mean all these stories are true? That every single one of these people were strung out, they were on drugs, they were headed for prison, their lives were a wreck, they, they got their family taken away, and their lives were transformed? I can't unsee that because I'm in a similar situation. I feel like I'm stuck. I see no vision. I'm depressed about my condition. And if God did it for them, I can't unsee that. I'm thinking God could do it for me. And when you start thinking God could do it for you, you know what that's called? Vision. And nothing happens until that happens to you. And it's no wonder that the majority of the demonic temptations that are out there have to do with something that takes over your mind. Because as long as your mind has been taken over by a drug, taken over by alcohol, taken over by unforgiveness and anger, this is what you can't do. You can't receive vision. We even call that tripping. You're on one. 
You're tripping. See, when you have no vision, you're super short-sighted because your pain and your loneliness is what's driving your decision-making process. When you don't have vision, you settle for just about anything. And that's why you see beautiful young ladies hooked up with monsters. What do you see in him? No vision. All I see is I'm lonely and he told me he loves me. Get a dog. <laughs> They'll tell you they love you every day. But don't mess up your life. But why would you? You know why? You see no vision. You see no value. You see no future. So you start settling for less. You start settling for moments. You start reacting to just one week at a time. One weekend at a time. What are you going to do? Oh, this weekend, I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. But this weekend, I'm going to go to a party and I'm going to get faded. So that's your vision. Lose your mind. Get faded. Is that your picture of your future one weekend at a time you could only see one week at a time, and the weekend has no purpose the weekend has no vision the life has no purpose has no vision you're just reacting to what's coming at you whatever temptation if it makes you feel good you just take it because this is why this is why there's no future you're preparing for well Rosa and Philip they came and they were in a service like this similar to what you're in today and they were exposed to the word of God. They were exposed to Jesus. How he's come to give us life in abundance. What he said is, right now, apart from me, if you don't have a life, I would say, if you do not have a relationship with God, I would say this, you ain't living yet. It's not, it's not real life yet. It's not real family life quite yet. It's not real peace yet. It's not real joy yet. It's not real victory yet. It's not, it's not clarity yet. There's, there's no vision quite yet. There's no purpose quite yet. You're busy. And you might have experienced some successes in life, but, but you're finding out, I'm still empty though. Be honest. I'm missing something. Well, Rosa and Philip came to this church. And when they heard that there was an alternative, God gave them a vision. You know what they said? Yes. I want that. They both left their seats after, well, at the end of the service. They came forward and they gave their lives to Jesus. And they started the process of letting God lead them, not letting their addiction lead them. That was done. I'm starting a new life. This is what they did. They took our next step in our, our growth journey. And they went for, to starting at the way. Then they both got baptized. And the baptism represented my old life is gone. It's bare and buried underneath that water. And I want everybody to know, I'm following Jesus. I'm a new person. And they made that decision. So they finished starting at the way. Then they went to prospering at the way. And in that class, we teach you how to set goals. Write down the vision. Get a vision. Write down the vision. And they did it. At the top of Rosa's list was one thing. I want to be reunited with my father that I have not seen for 28 years. She puts it on there. So this, this is the couple right here. So she says, I want to re be reunited with my father. So she starts, that's her father. This is her when she was a baby. She hasn't seen him for 28 years. She searches and she finds out that he's in Mexico. And she found out through Facebook. She's looking name after name after name after name after name. And she finds, this is the one. And when she found him, she found out that he works at a tire shop in Mexico. A Goodyear tire shop in Mexico. So she gets the number for that specific, specific fire, I mean Goodyear, and she calls. The receptionist calls and she says, is so-and-so work there? He goes, no, he don't work here. He owns this place. He goes, oh, okay. He goes, who are you, by the way? I'm his daughter. And then the receptionist went crazy. How did you get our number? 
my, my, uh, your father told me last week that it's been on his heart that he wanted to get reunited with you. How did you get this number? Did someone tell you? She goes, no, I just set some goals. I got some vision and I wanted to get back with dad. He goes, wow, the, the reception is, wow, this is a miracle. So they get to father, he gets on the phone and he calls her up and they're crying together. They're reunited. At the end of the conversation, he goes, honey, do you have any bills? Any debt? She goes, I do. I got a car, I got this and that. He goes, you don't have any more debt. Send me all the bills and I'll pay them all off for you today. It goes, it's more than that. It's more than that. It's more than that. He's asked her, are you renting or buying? He goes, well, we're renting. You're not renting anymore. Go find a house that you want and I'm going to buy it for you. I'll give you whatever you need to get that house and put it in your name. It doesn't end there. Every month he's sending her thousands of dollars and put it in an account for her. She had $60,000 in that account since she reunited with her father. It doesn't end there. Recently, he sent her over his will. And she's finding out her father is a millionaire. He not only owns one, one business, he owns oh, 10 good years throughout Mexico and a whole bunch of other businesses and properties. He put her in his will and he gave her 98% in the will of all of his money. Say, so Pastor, what, what does this have to do with? This doesn't have to do with you set goals and you're going to become a millionaire. <laughs> oh, man, praise the Lord. I'm going to do this goal for sure. <laughs> All this is, is you get vision from God so God could begin to unfold the greatness that he's called you to do and every blessing is going to start being unlocked. But this is a key. If you never get to the point that you get vision and write it down, this is the reality. Nothing will change. So now you're probably asking, well, pastor, that's some serious stuff then. <laughs> it just got serio today. <laughs> All right? Man, yeah. well, that's true. So then you would ask me the question, oh, if you're smart, if you're wise, if you're a believer, then you start seeing, wait a second, there's a whole treasure of life. There's a whole purpose in my life that if I don't get the vision, I'll never see it unfold. So I, I, pastor, how do I get vision? That's a good question. You're so smart. I'm going to answer you just three easy steps to get vision. Number one, this is deep, deep. Ask God for it. God wants to give us vision for our lives. Why? Because none of you were created by accident. You might be living an accident life, but you were never created just to live life, to be abused, to be a nobody, to have no purpose, to have no sense of direction. That's the devil's plan for your life, but it's not God's plan for your life. Have you ever, you don't have to answer this right now, but have you ever... Ask God, what's your vision for my life? And if you've never asked God, what's your vision for my life? This is what you don't know. You don't know what your vision for your life is. <laughs> and you know what you call that? Confusion. And when you're confused about your destiny, you're confused about your purpose, you're confused about your identity, you're vulnerable to every wind and wave that comes in life. It moves you from the right, it moves you from the left. You never get planted anywhere because you have no vision to, plant, to be planted in. Look at this. In Jeremiah 33, 3. Ask me, God's saying this, and I will tell you things that you don't know and can't find out. What? What he's saying is, I'm going to show you stuff you think you know, but you don't know nothing. All you know is your past. All you know is your hurt. All you know is your limited education. But you don't know the stuff I know. Because I'm all knowing and I know you better than you know you. And before you were born, I already had a plan for your life. I already told you that. How about me showing you what I know? And no matter where you go, you can't find out what I know. 
You only could come to me to find out what I know about you. Hmm. What a shame that we're going to people that don't know nothing and we're asking them to give us vision for our lives. What do you think? Well, what I was thinking, my opinion is, And, th and we, get, we get driven by news. We get dri driven by culture. When you don't know who you are, you, you just try to be like everybody else. And this is a problem with not knowing what vision, God vision God has for you. You start having envy for those that are succeeding. Envy is the attitude of those that have no vision. You start getting jealous. Well, how come they... And God says, stop focusing on them. Start focusing on me. I have a vision for your life. What I did for them, if they've succeeded, I can help you succeed as well. But you got to turn to me to get some vision and instruction. Ask me, and I will tell you things that you don't know and can't find out. Wow. See, God has given us the Holy Spirit to tell us about the future. God wants us to know what is coming. So we know where we're headed and what to believe for. You should have an idea of where you're headed and what you're standing or aiming at, believing for. You should know. Now we know the Holy Spirit gives us salvation through faith in Christ. The Holy Spirit will empower you to do what God has called you to do. The Holy Spirit will give you special ability. The Holy Spirit will comfort you and give you peace. The Holy Spirit will produce his fruit, the fruit and the character of Christ in your life. But maybe you didn't know this, that the Holy Spirit also will tell you about your future. Wow. Look at this. Look in John 16, 12, Jesus speaking. Oh, there is so much more I want to tell you. <laughs> I put that in. Because I can see the excitement. Oh, boy. There's so much more I want to tell you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's me. <laughs> A little creepy right there. <laughs> But there's more that, what he's saying is, it's a relationship. There's some things I want to tell you about your life that you, you're not even ready for it yet. So I'm not going to tell you right now, so he's going to tell them. But I'm going to give the Holy Spirit and he's going to tell you what I want to tell you. And I'm going to continue speaking. Jesus is still speaking through the Holy Spirit. I wish I had a relationship like the disciples did that walk with Jesus, he goes, you do. My spirit is in you. A matter of fact, if you tune into my spirit, you're actually closer to me than they were. Let's look at this. But you can't understand it now. Verse 13, John 16, 13. When the Holy Spirit, who is truth, comes, he shall guide you into all truth. For he will not be presenting his own ideas, but will be passing on to you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Wow. You know what the Holy Spirit does? Every whisper in heaven that's ever been said about you, the Holy Spirit wants to tell you. What do you mean? Heaven's speaking about me? Of course heaven is speaking about you. You're the vision of God. People, aren't, it's organizations aren't, money's not, things aren't the vision of God. You're, you have captured God's mind. And when, when God has been, when, any, when you were captivated by someone, you just can't help but talk good about them. So God's talking great things. He's talking vision. And now the Holy Spirit, does, what he does, he tells you what the Father's been saying, what Jesus has been saying about you, about your future, 
about your destiny, about your purpose. And he wants to unlock you. He wants to tell you about the future. And some of us cannot get anything, any vision for the future because you've been captivated by your past. You've been captivated by your failures. You've been captivated by the abuse that you went through. You've been captured, captured by the fear, captured by the depression. This is what I do know. Once you get a vision from God, depression can no longer live in your life. Once you get a vision from God, anxiety cannot rule in your life because all those come with images of you failing, images of you dying, images of you not getting ahead. But once you got a vision from God, this is what happens. The vision begins to take over your mind and begin to take over your emotions and it begins to fight off every destructive emotion and thought in your life. Why is vision so important? Because God never does anything before revealing. So I have to ask God, give me vision. He goes, have you asked me for it? If you ask me for it, I'll give it to you. I'll show you things that you've never seen. I'll tell you about things you've never done. Because the future I have for you is beyond your, even your preparation. Because my vision for you is my idea. And my ideas are called God ideas. And God ideas can only happen with God. All I need you to do is write it down and believe it. What I did for Rosa, she couldn't do for herself in a million lifetimes if there, such, if there was such thing. But God did for her in a moment what she couldn't do for herself ever. But what God has for you is unlocked when, he has, when, you, when you receive vision from him. Why? Because God does not do anything without first revealing it. God doesn't do anything without first speaking it. That means before there was light, he said, let there be light. And then there, and then there was light. Everything that God has ever done with any human on earth or anything he's ever done on earth, he's first spoke it, given a vision, given a vision to someone, and then he's done it. Look at the scripture. In Amos 3, 7, it says this. Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. What did God say? I don't do anything until I reveal it. So this is what I need to do. I need to get some revelation. I want to get some insight. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be easy, and that's why we're fasting. Because there's been so many distractions that we've actually integrated in our lives. That's just part of life. Our minds are so consumed with racing thoughts. There's no time. There's no room for God to come in and speak. So number one, how do we get vision? Ask God for it. How do we get vision? Number two, tune in to God through fasting. This is why at the beginning of the year, we fast. We don't fast because it's a nice religious thing to do. We're fasting. The number one reason that we're fasting is to hear from God. Get some insight from God. Get some vision from God. And this is why so many people start coming to church and then they dwindle, fade out. They fade out because this, every vision comes with a price. There's no such thing as a vision without a price. When the vision is clear, it's easy to pay the price. When the vision is not clear, when, the pri when you have to pay the price, you don't even know what you're aiming at. It's easy to just run away. You're looking to escape the process instead of staying in the process. And you'll say it's worth the process because I already know where I'm headed. I already know the vision. That's why Jesus endured the cross. He was willing to pay the price because he knew the reward. The reward was you. This is why if we ever get to the place that they start arresting pastors and arresting Christians for preaching the gospel, do you think I'm going to back down or change our message? 
No, I already got the vision. And the vision is people being saved, people being set free, eternal life. You could do what you want to do. You could threaten me. You could put me in jail. But you're not going to change my course, change my process, or change the vision because you never gave it to me. Well, what if we kill you? So I already got the vision. I go to heaven. I got vision for that too. Christians that don't know truth, Christians that have no vision, they perish. They die. They fade away. They quit. They give up on their marriages, on their relationships, on living right, on giving. They give up because they have no long-term vision. Hmm. Real quiet in here. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to give you a truth about fasting. The pattern is always the same. We fast and God speaks. We fast and what? So why are we fasting? We want to get vision from God. Say, I'm, fa I'm fasting for breakthrough. I'll, I'll get this. When you get a word from God, in your word is your breakthrough. In your word is your healing. In your word is your destiny. In your word, come on, is your friendship. In your word is your restoration. All you need is a word. You don't need a thing to happen. You need to get a word because that word will make that happen. In Acts 13, 2. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said... What happened? Say it with me. The Holy Spirit said. They were worshiping. They were praising like we've been doing this morning. And they were praying. They were listening. And they were fasting. They wanted a word from God. And while they were fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke. And this is what he said. Appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. You know what God released was vision. I have vision for you and I have vision for Barnabas and Saul. And I want you to let them know. Release them to go to the place that I've called them to go to transform lives now and for eternity. I have a call for them. Here's some vision. Wow. We need to start early in the year, being led by the Holy Spirit. Get vision from God. Don't be led by your insecurities because your insecurities speak loud and clear. You got to shut that voice down. You got to start hearing from God. God wants to lead you and give you vision for every part of your life. Investments. How about Holy Spirit-led investments? How about that? How about Holy Spirit-led families? Holy Spirit-led businesses? Holy Spirit-led children? Holy Spirit-led communities? Holy Spirit, come on, Holy Spirit-led, we got vision. And I'm going to tell you this, it's going to get worse in this world. So don't be looking for your answers in the government, they don't got it. You better look your, for your answers in a different government, the kingdom of heaven, and it has it. But I really believe, it's just crazy, I'm not disrespecting leaders, but our leaders are getting dumber. The more I listen to our leaders, they're d dumb. Like you're acting like a little kid, stop it. It's wrong. <laughs> All of them. You know what's so good about them acting dumb? I love it. They need some smart people. <laughs> That's where we come in. What the schools can't do, what the government can't do, God can do through a vision. Come on, that God has given just one person. One person with a God vision can turn a community around. One person with a God vision can turn a family around. One person. 
when God wanted to take care of the whole Egypt and all of his people, all he did was raise up a, man, a young man named Joseph with a vision from God that straightened out that whole economy. And for seven, there, was a, there was a fast for seven years. None of them starved because a man of God was put in position with some God vision. When you guys start getting some God vision, you're in demand everywhere you go because you're seeing things that they can't know. And God starts doing, I want you to get this. When God wants to do something on this earth, you're the conduit. How he does it is through God giving you a vision, you receiving it. You, little old me, yeah, little old you. God uses little old, old, little old, I don't know what I'm saying. Little old people like us. Little old olds. He uses us. And when he uses us, he gives us a vision. When he gives us a vision, he fulfills it because it's his word and we don't get any glory because we realize I could have never done this on my own, but I got a vision from God and he made it happen. Give God a little bit of praise of what he's ready to do. So they fasted and God said, they fasted and what? The last thing, how do you get vision? Write down your desires on paper. Write down my desires on paper? Yeah, write down what you desire on paper. God speaks through our desires. Take some time and write down what you want. Goal setting is just writing down what you want to see happen in your life. Wait, well, why would God give me what I want? We just said what I want, not what I need, what I want. Yeah. What you want, I'll tell you why. Because when you love God and your hearts are knitted to him, when you love God and you find your joy in serving God, this is who qualifies for this. You love God. I serve God. My greatest joy is God. Once your heart is knitted with God, this is why God will give you whatever you want. Because whatever you want is now what God wants. Like there's no difference. It's starting to turn into the same exact thing. And God wants you to have, do fun stuff too. Does God want that for me? Because some of us are so spiritual, we write down stuff that's only spiritual. I'm going to fast for 40 days this year. Just like Jesus. I'm going to read their Bible 10 times in 2021. <laughs> you know, Gabriel's doing something that's crazy. Gabriel's on a, on, a, on a program right now reading the whole Bible in 30 days. 42 chapters a day or something like that. Pray for him. You have no time to go to the bathroom, nothing. He's just reading the Bible. He's doing it. He's doing it. Praise the Lord. But you know what Gabriel's doing? He's tuning in. I want to hear from God. I want to hear from God. I want to hear from God. I'm fasting. I'm fasting my media. I'm fasting everything. I just want to hear from God. And if I could hear from God early in the year, I already know how this year is going to turn out. This year is going to be the best year of my life. I'll have challenges. I'll have battles. But it will end in a win. Why? Because God wants me to win. It gives him glory that I overcome. It gives him glory when I don't quit. It gives him glory when I fall and I get right back up and say, I'm not giving up. There's a vision to fight for. So now, look at Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. What does it say? Like, you know what he's saying? Have fun with God. And he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Wow. I have some goals, like personal. Like personal, God, church goals are amazing. This year, we want to reach 3,000 new families, reaching one new family at a time. Every one of you look to bring, reach one family, bring them into your, bring them into your world. Let's disciple them. Let's love them. We could do this together. I want to see new families here that are being loved and cared for. They're being directed by the power of God. Finding eternal life is going to happen through us getting that vision. That's one of my visions, to get one family in. But 
I got some other visions that are, that are not so spiritual. Like I want to do this. I want to go to a racetrack and learn how to drive a race car. I know it's crazy. But next time I get a fast car, I want to be able to drive that thing right. Not crash it like I did the other time. <laughs> you guys didn't know that? I got a real fast car. It was a Z20 with 505 horsepower, naturally aspirated race car. I've never raced anything. But why did I buy it? I just liked the sound of the engine. When I heard the engine, I go, I'll buy it. <laughs> so I started like testing the limits of that car every day. Thinking I'm a race car driver without actually being trained. The day before we open up this campus, it's one o'clock in the morning. It's Saturday night. We're getting ready, just finishing, tying up a few things. I'm leaving. We're coming back. I'm coming back probably five o'clock in the morning, coming back, getting ready for our first services. Easter. We're opening up on Easter, first services. I leave out of here. I'm excited. First service. And then a demonic thought came in my mind. It literally came, demonic, really demonic. And I agreed with it. So there's a curb on that side going around where that big warehouse is. There's a curb. I go, this is a race car. Let me see how fast I could take this curve without the car like skidding. When it starts going, I'll stop. And the reason I never heard the car go, so I go, this car's amazing. I've never heard it go. It's a race car. So I take it around that corner and it does it. I'm, I'm like, I'm hitting that thing and it's going around the corner and I'm pressing gas more. It's not doing, uh, but this is what happens. All of a sudden, the car just slips out from me underneath me. It has race car tires and I didn't know I had to warm them up. They have no grip and it was like they're on glass. So I'm thinking in slow motion in my head, okay, here is where the car's reached its limits. And I literally just let go of the steering wheel. I'm like, because the car's totally out of control. I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know if I'm going to be upside down in a few seconds. I don't know nothing. It's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I got to learn how to drive a car. That's what I'm saying. Say. So the car ends up, I mean, thank God, and missed a big cement area where I would have smashed. The car didn't flip over, but it landed in a field, right? You know, before they built that thing all in the dirt with the axles all broken, $25,000 worth of damage on the suspension. I ended, up, I ended up with like a broken rib. And this was the worst part. My phone was dead. <laughs> this is what happens when you, you give in to the devil's dumb ideas. So, so don't you laugh at me. You do dumb stuff too. So now you know what I have to do? I got to run all the way to Denny's <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning. It's all dark out there. Nobody's there. My car's broken, won't start, just a mess in the dirt, just buried. So I go to Denny's, a miracle happens. They're, they are open, but that's not a miracle. I call Lisa and she answers, praise the Lord. There was a miracle right there. <laughs> She's not here, is she? <laughs> so she's not here. We're, we're good. It's just between us right now. Don't you tell her nothing. We're just, it's between us. Keep secrets, right? <laughs> so she answers, but the idea was, how, how did I get in this mess? I want to learn how to write, raise a car next time. I won't get in this car. <laughs> no, something. But I have dreams. I'm going to write my second book this year. So there's some, I, uh, maybe you have an idea about you want to buy an investment part, whatever it is, write that stuff down, write the spiritual stuff down, write, write your health goals, write your family goals, write your career book goals. I'm going to read six books this year. Write down those goals, write down your future. God wants to give you a download of your future, but you're going to need to spend some time on it. And if you do, God will bring it to pass. Rosa did it. And she got it. And she got above and beyond what she asked or thought. And God is saying, I'm going to give you some vision. I'm not going to tell you all of it because it's more than you could ever handle. It's going to be greater than you ever thought. 
as in the end. And there's going to be a process. But I'm going to get you through. And the God that does above and beyond whatever you could ask or think, that's working within you, is going to accomplish it. This is the life. I love living for God. We have a vision to open up a, another foster home, transitional foster home for girls. We did one last year. And thank God we opened that home. We got young men that are in the foster system their whole lives. And we got a vision from God. God, this is what God said. I want to open up a foster home for children that have been in the foster system their whole lives and help them in their transition so they have some family and people that love them for the first time in their lives and love them right where they're at. A vision from God. You know what I did? I wrote it down. And you know what happened this year? We opened the house. This year, we're going to do one for, for the girls. There's girls that have been foster systems their whole lives. Once they get 18, they call them aging out. And they age out into the world. With no family, no education, no backing. Fearful. Scared. And the devil's trying to do everything he can to reach them in that vulnerable space. So many of them end up in prison, strung out on drugs, in prostitution, massively abused for the rest of their lives with no sense of direction in deep poverty if we don't do nothing about it. So when I'm talking about vision, God wants you to enjoy life. I want to take two vacations with Lisa this year. That's beautiful. I want to remodel Lisa's kitchen. Lisa asked me, where's the money? Don't worry about the money. God will provide that. I just, I just write down vision. Right? But then we're going to open up a church in Pomona. That's vision. We're going to reach a city that's been forgotten. That's vision. We're going to start planting churches in inner cities across the world, in the United States and the world. That's vision. We're going to do things. We're going to actually, our goal this year, our vision this year, is to actually get another location or two locations in San Bernardino. Because I want, just like McDonald's, if McDonald's has four McDonald's in San Bernardino, I want to have four locations in San Bernardino. <laughs> reaching every area and every neighborhood. We're reaching the Inland Empire. We we're even talking about start, starting a church up there in the, in the upper desert over here. Talking about starting a church in Moreno Valley. It all starts with vision. Imagine if we have no vision. Nothing happens. Because before God does it, he reveals it. Get ready in these next 21 days to get vision from God. Get a little piece of paper, write it down, hold on to it, believe for it, stand on it until it comes to pass. Even if it delays, it's for sure going to be fulfilled. Because God is going to bring it to pass. Write down your desires on paper. God's going to help you accomplish that as well. He loves you. He cares about you. He's a good father. And he wants you to enjoy life. Did you receive that today?